at Marek Chinella Architects, I think sustainability is, it is fully integrated. We don't see sustainability as an add-on. So it's not something that uh, we do checks with, but it's something that is embedded from the very beginning. And in fact, what I personally really like about our firm is that you can't really say there is a Mare Cucinella language in terms of architecture, because architecture changes so much in accordance to place, people, program. So it, it, it's been a lot being flexible, interpreting the context, understanding what are the potentials, especially in the interaction with the local climate, as well as the local culture, and transfer it into design input. And we do that a lot in the practice because we have, we are about, 120 people at Mario Cucinal Architects, and we have a research and development group of eight people, 100% dedicated to research, as well as a postgraduate program named the SOS, School of Sustainability, where we host with us for uh, almost 10 months. Now the, the program format is changing slightly, but we have postgraduate students, whether they are engineers or architects, uh, joining uh, Mario Cucinal Architects and SOS School of Sustainability. And we are sort of, of uh, investigating the new trends uh, of, uh, of sustainability and what it really means, exploring that into projects that are applied research. Most of them, for example, temporary pavilions and things like that actually get built by the students directly. And, and this becomes knowledge that we feed back into the, into the office. So we sort of, with the school, we explore, we test, and then we, get it back into the activity of the office. So there's this continuous learning loop that, uh, that pushes us and challenges us in, in all our projects. In terms of uh, measuring sustainability, this is a, um, a very complicated one because uh, in a way we, we sometimes are dealing with uh, numbers. So energy certifications, so we use a lot lead certifications. So we used in the past some BRIAM and some other local certifications, such as for the building that we designed in, uh, in Ghana. Uh, I think the system was Green Star. And, uh, and so in a way, on, on one hand, we use uh, traditional ways of, of expressing how a building performs. But again, those ways are, are, are dealing a lot with the building's performance uh, rather than the satisfaction of, of the users. So more and more we are exploring as, um, certification systems like WELL or FITWELL that are more dealing with the well-being, which is uh, becoming increasingly more important. Uh, but most of all, we tend to run um, post-occupancy evaluation when we can and when we can have access to the actual data of, of the buildings that uh, we design, um, as well as uh, customer satisfaction um, surveys, which are, are quite important. But in general, I think we, in, in, in the way we are conceiving most of the building, there's a process that comes before checking how actually the building perform, which is we normally have a participatory process in, in most of our designs, especially schools, educational buildings, or uh, let's say buildings that are publicly developed. Because in a way, have, receiving the input of the community before allows you to have a, a much better feedback afterwards. But most of all, once again, having people feeling identified with the building and therefore taking care of it. Specifications is, uh, it, it is a tricky one. Uh, what we do, we, we basically tackle it in two different ways. One is uh, we have a team dedicated to that, that is working with the, um, um, with the suppliers to understand what they're doing, what is innovative, what is out there that can be integrated into a sustainable building to reduce also embodied energy. We know embodied energy is becoming increasingly more uh, important as a subject to be tackled by architecture. So on one hand, we do that. And on the other hand, we experiment ourselves. I'm talking, for example, about the project of, of Tecla, which is the soil 3D printed house which uh, again, it's been a long research with our partners at WASP that they actually are producers and fabricators of 3D printers. We sat together, we explored the materials, we worked with other partners like Matei and, uh, and, and, and other potential suppliers. And, and we tested, we got our hands dirt and, uh, and, and then we got Tecla out of it, which is, uh, it's a prototype, it's an experiment, but uh, it's, it's, it's quite fascinating to see how you can build with 
with raw earth, which is something that we've been doing for centuries and then we suddenly forgot how to do that. So I'd say it's, it's these two different ways. One is what there is a bit more notional, understanding what is there in the market and being more and more selective about the specifications. And the other is, is testing and exploring, which is a totally different story and, and, and very funny also. The main shift that the industry needs is stop lying <laughs> because there's a lot of lies about a sustainable world and uh, everything is sustainable, everything is green. You go to Burger King and they say freshly prepared. It's not true. And uh, so I think we need to stop lying. We need to be more transparent. And I think this can really change uh, how we play this game because uh, Mario always says something that I, I really acknowledge that architecture and construction is not a sustainable act. No way. We can make it sustainable, we can build responsibly, but in general, if we want to be 100% sustainable, we should stop building. Of course, we can't because popul world population is growing, cities are evolving, et cetera, et cetera. But if we start from, from acknowledging that, then I think a lot more opportunities and a lot more doors can be open. And we stop lying, we give real numbers, we give real data. And, and this is something that not only the architects and the designers and the engineers have to do, but also the industry and in general, all, all brands and all suppliers. I think we need, we need a much more transparent way of, uh, of communicating sustainability because it sometimes is, is even good to say, look, I tried my best, but I failed. I wanted to cut emission by 30 and I got to 10. So these are my lessons learned.